Now, before we start working with the sticks, it's important to warm up the wrists and shoulders. Now this is one of the best and easiest ones for the wrist. You simply hold the sticks in the middle and vigorously twist back and forth. Now with this one you hold the sticks at the end and snap them up and down. Now it should go without saying, be careful when doing this one so you don't hit yourself in the head. Now for number three, we're just going to add a little twirl. Make a small circle up and a small circle down. If you notice, we're trying to use the wrist on these circles, not the whole arm. And now we're going to switch to one stick. Now it's the same one circle movement coming up, but the difference is we're going to reach behind or under our armpit and grab the stick to switch sides, just like you would do if you were using a pair of nunchucks. Now we're going to add the last few moves together. Circle up, circle down, circle up and back again, and then switch. Now you can do this as many times on each side as you want. I'm just going back, forward, back, and switching. But it's up to you how many times you want to do it. Not only does this help loosen the wrist and shoulders, but it helps increase your dexterity. Finally, we're going to loosen the shoulders. Just going to make a big circle in front of the body. You could also do arm circles with your arms straight out to the side in addition to these. Now these are the nine striking angles that we use. Every style has its own pattern. If you look at these angles, this will cover every possible direction and combination that you could imagine. If you're new to this, to make the footwork easier, I'm keeping my left foot in place and simply moving my right leg back and forth. That way you can concentrate on the strikes and not the footwork. Now, striking with the shaft as we are here is called an impact strike. Now, if you notice, when we strike, you want that foot or that leg to be in front. So if I throw an angle one, my right leg should be in front. 
This is all based on the sword. If I throw an angle one, which is a downward diagonal, and my left leg is in front, I could possibly hit my own leg. We'll go more into this later. Sonkiti are thrusting strikes. We're using the same nine angles, but we're thrusting with the point of the stick. Now, while this might not make a lot of sense using the stick, when we demonstrate it with the blade, it makes a whole lot of sense. Now, if you are new to stick fighting, keep your left hand placed on your chest. That way, it won't get in the way, and it's available for blocking if you need it. Now the puño is the butt end of the stick. Now these strikes are very effective, especially when you're doing counters. When someone blocks, you counter his block and strike with the butt end of the stick. Also notice when I switch to the knife in the ice pick position, this type of striking is even more effective. The nice thing about Filipino martial arts is that the moves and strikes and techniques are the same. Whether you're using a stick, a sword, a knife, a palm stick, it doesn't matter, even with the empty hand. This makes the art much easier to learn as you're not learning a whole new set of techniques for each individual weapon. Notice here, angle one and angle two using my fist or elbow if it's a diagonal down it's still an angle one or angle two angle three and four are your horizontal strikes angle five is your straight thrust doesn't matter what the height is Six and seven, diagonal up, your shovel hooks, and then your vertical down and vertical up. Now, one thing that people get confused on is the angles. They think that an angle one, while it is a downward diagonal, they think that it can only go from the clavicle to the waist. That's not true. And angle one can be at any height. It can go from the clavicle to the waist. It can go from the waist to the leg. It can go from the knee down to the calf. So anything along this line is an angle one. Just as the three and four or horizontal strikes. Any horizontal strike at any level is an angle three and four. Now, when you execute a full power strike without stopping, this is a lob tick or a through strike. A with tick is called a bounce back, half strike, or broken strike. Abanico in Tagalog means fan. It's just like the handheld fans that you use to cool yourself off. Now, while initially this strike doesn't look like much, 
and when you first try it, it doesn't have much power. But once you get the snapping and whipping motion down, it's a very devastating strike. This typically goes to the side of the head or to the temples. You can also strike to the arms, wrists, and hand. It's a very quick movement and very difficult to stop. You want to try to keep the forearm in as much of a vertical position as you can. You want to try to use the wrist for the snapping motion. Also notice how I'm turning the waist and feet. One fun drill to do is to use both sticks and do the abanico with both hands. If you're right-handed, your left hand will not cooperate at all when you first try this. Next time I'll show you how to set up your own tire stations.